This presentation, if you want it, you can get your own copy of it, okay? I, I, so I see people all the time, I put up a new slide and they get their phone out and they take a picture. I don't care if you wanna get your phone out and take a picture, but just go get the PDF. Like, it's all there. The only thing that the PDF will not have is the videos that I'm gonna show you don't play because I haven't figured out how to make a PDF do that. The Storm Hunter WX weather app is free to download and use and provides you with warning of severe weather even before the National Weather Services issue alerts. This advanced weather app is an important tool for awareness of severe weather that I use every day. Download and use it totally free without in-app purchases on iOS or Android at the link below. So what I do every day is I wanna help people to, to better their training. My goal is, is like, like I say, every day we analyze somebody's defensive use of force. Every day, uh, every week Mike interviews a real person to talk about what happened in their defensive encounter. I get calls from lawyers all the time and do expert witness work and uh, I see lots of stupid ways that people decide to pay my mortgage. I'm not joking. We get, you know, the calls that I get, when a lawyer needs an expert, it's when things are really stupid, and the stupid has risen to the level that the lawyer can't unstupid it by themselves. And so um, I, I wanna keep people out of those things, and so what we do in seminars like this is try to teach you how real gunfights actually go. We want your training to be recent, relevant, and realistic. Now, now here's the thing, training with a firearm is a perishable skill. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by rustling your jimmies a little bit and asking you, when's the last time you had a dry fire regimen? When's the last time you dry practiced with your handgun? Grip in the gun, we always say grip is the master, sight set the pace, trigger is the servant. When's the last time you, you committed to, hey, five minutes, three days a week? Hey, ha, ha. Oh, when's the last time you actually went and fired your gun? Uh, the average uh, person, only about 22% of handgun owners in America go to the range five times a year or more. Now, most people who do go to the range, most of those 22% just turn money into noise. They don't go with any plan. They don't go with any idea about getting better. They just go to shoot. Now, don't get me wrong. Shooting can be fun. I don't mind just going and shooting for fun, too, you know, because I'm not here to yuck your yum. But at the same time, if you're going to carry a firearm as a defensive tool, you should practice for that task. Your training must be relevant. It must be relevant to your world. I, I tell folks all the time, like, you know, I see guys that go to, you know, um, multi-man room clearing class. And I jokingly call that tactical fantasy band camp. <laughs> now listen, I've been to tactical fantasy band camp. I like it, it's fun. It's super fun to get all the UTM rifles and get the plate carriers and the helmets and stack on rooms and go shoot bad guys in houses and stuff like that and do force on force, super fun. But you know what I will never do in my life? I will never have a team of dudes run in a room with me. So I want my, the bulk and the majority of my training to be relevant to my life, to be relevant to who I am. I am a private citizen concealed carrier. I'm not an on-duty law enforcement officer. The mission drives more than the gear train. Mission drives your tactics, your techniques, and your procedures. Mission drives how you live your life. As a private citizen, I have a different mission than a law enforcement officer, so my training must be different than a law enforcement officer's. So you want your training to be relevant to your world, and it must be realistic. You actually, actually have to have an understanding of what skill set do I need, what level of skill is sufficient to the task, and how do I get that skill? So I, I see this in, a, in an environment, so like for empty-handed skills, like I say, I'm a white belt in jiu-jitsu, I'm not claiming that, you might be a purple belt or whatever, and be way better than that and able to strangle me all, all day, that's cool. There's a, a slight difference between training Grappling skills for fighting and tournaments. Now, the tournament stuff will help you an awful lot. You just gotta throw a little dirt in it from time to time. I'm gonna rustle your jimmies on all that stuff because I want you to have a realistic understanding of how actual gunfights go. So that's what we're gonna work on. Now, how can we use videos? That's the next thing I wanna talk about. There are some limitations. Now, this word pedagogy, how, how do we use in a teaching environment video evidence? There's been an explosion over the last uh, 15 years of video recording technology, okay? Anybody know when the first smartphone came out that could record video? No, the iPhone 1 actually could in 2007. So you think about that, 15 years, where, where people could point this at somebody and take a video. And before that, you could if you had your you know, camera with you. There's some cameras that could record video, but there was no sharing of it because when, when did the first major social media network go public? 
Anybody remember MySpace, Tom, right? <laughs> MySpace kind of was, but it was more niche. Facebook went public, and you didn't have to have a, uh, a college email address in 2008. And before that, file sharing, you know, anybody remember the days of AOL when the internet went bong, 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 and, you know, you, you download a video, and it takes an hour for it to download a little, you know, standard definition video, okay? But now we have them, and they're everywhere. Surveillance footage, badge cams, you can see what really happens. Um, but a, a video gives us a third-person view of what happened. Okay, a video tells us uh, from a surveillance footage perspective, the first person is the person who is the defender, the, the good person who's, who's trying to protect themselves. The second point of view is the bad guy, the person who is doing the harm. The third point of view is a disinterested observer. And a, a surveillance video is generally, you know, if you put it in a room like this, you'd put it in a corner and you'd put it up high so that you could see better. And that's what they do. Now, sometimes we get first person with badge cams, or at least close to first person. But of course, where's most people's badge cam when an officer's wearing a badge cam? Yeah, we say badge, but it's really not badge. It's normally the middle of their chest is where most of them are a little bit high center chest. Um, sometimes we're starting to see some lapel cams, which are so much better. Every once in a while, they did try uh, glasses cams. The problem with that is officers then go inside and put their glasses on their head. <laughs> now we get to see the ceiling, right? It's not exactly what we want. Uh, lapel cams are best. The, the challenge sometimes we see with the, the cam on the high center chest is, is then when the gunfight starts, the officer does like this. And now what do we get to see? You can see the bottom of their hands for the rest of the time. Okay? By the way, a lot of traditional martial arts, you know, you see the guy that takes the knife and goes, hi -ya! <laughs> And then stands there while you beat tar out of him. While you go, ha, look at how much I kicked his butt. Well, yeah, if he stands there, he will. My problem with real bad guys is, is they go, hi and then that doesn't work, and then they go, hi again, and they keep coming, hi ya hi until you make them stop. So you got to know that stuff, and your brain really can't differentiate between actual and virtual experiences. And if you disagree with that, you know, here's the funny thing. You ever remember, you take your phone, you ever see a video of, like, um, a roller coaster going over the dip? And when it goes, what happens? Yeah, you feel it in your stomach, you go, ah! No, wait a minute, you're looking at a bug, you're looking at your magic pocket supercomputer. Why did I, uh, because your brain has a hard time differentiating. So your brain has a hard time differentiating between actual and, and virtual experiences, and so that gives us some good stuff, but there are limits. Here's the limitations of video. Okay, first of all, they don't provide a perspective from eye level. The badge cam is here, but that doesn't, it's not the same level as his eyes. The surveillance footage is up high, so it's seeing it from a perspective that's not your eye level which is, we have to control for. Secondly, uh, the camera resolution doesn't take what we call foveal vision into account. Your foveal vision is what you can actually focus on. And so when we look at a badge cam or a surveillance footage, maybe the whole thing is in 1080 or 4K, and so we can see all of it, but that doesn't take into account how people actually see and what they're focusing on. So, well, you know, you can see right there he had this thing in his hand. Well, did the person actually look at it and see the thing in his hand or not? Next thing here, uh, it's a 2D view of a 3D world. So I always like to say stuff like this. So if I address this part of the crowd, are my fingers pointing at each other? And you're like, yeah, how about you folks? Are my fingers pointing at each other? No, because I'm looking at, so what I'm doing is this, right? And, and what you're doing is looking at a 2D view of a 3D world. We can control for that, but we have to understand it for what it is. On the badge cams especially, you, they, they wanna have as broad a perspective, and sometimes on surveillance footage too, and to get that, you get a fisheye effect. And that fisheye effect can skew distances. So all those things are controllable if we pay attention and we understand how to use them. But if we don't, they can give us a skewed perspective on what's actually happening. So I want you to recognize the limitations of video so, it, so we can actually take advantage of their value. Okay? What I really want you to take out of this is simply that what we see happen, we see happen a lot. People win gunfights in very predictable ways. People lose gunfights in very unpredictable ways.